What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Just Roll With It. I am the DM of this wonderful campaign, Riptide, named Grizzly, and this is the first session with only one. Yes, uh, my name's Bisley. I play Chip, and these are my wonderful friend. Oh. <laughs> this is... This is my friend Gillian. <laughs> and... And this is my friend, Jay. I just want to... And this is the scariest music <laughs> I've ever heard in my life. Put sad music on. Yes, 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 yes. And I'm ready to die. Uh, yep. For some reason, unexpectedly, you decided to make the decision to split from the party and go into a dangerous place on your own. So here we are, seeing if you live. Or if at the end of the session, you're going to have to bust out a new character sheet. Bro, I would too. Who are you going to play whenever Chip... I don't... Know? I don't care about my life. I'll play Bingo Schmingledink. Pirate Sh He's Captain Schmingledink. He's a shopkeep. He sells trinkets and All items. Right. Would you like to purchase this? First, let's see how uh, Chip's story ends. I'm joking. He's, he's gonna be fine. He's gonna be fine. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna be fine. I'm, I'm, I'm joking. Where we last left off. After you found Old Man Earl bleeding in an alley that set you up to be ambushed by a Shadowblade Drow sent by a figure from your past. A past you'd long repressed in your memory. A past you'd later set out on on your own to confront. And as you arrived in the Dark Port, heading for something called the Black Dock, followed a figure similar to the one who made an attempt on your life into a secret location resembling a black market and down into an eerie building, where you were stopped by a person who warned you to turn back, as everyone who enters here surely has a price to be paid. And so, your journey continues. As you walk through the entrance, formed by a hole in the wall of this run-down building, the people lounging on the ground flanking the hallway-like path also just as worn and tattered as the building itself. Illuminated by the slight purple glow emanating from deeper within. And as you get closer, you see and smell the fruity purple mist leaking from behind a portiere made of bright string lights. The sound of a bassy kick drum getting louder and louder as you emerge into a room filled with all kinds of funk. Half-dressed people bumping bodies in this crowded, dimly lit chamber, some slumped on the walls or in wooden booths with zombified expressions, the entire chamber filled with this mist and with this live jazz funk fusion music. So in this room that's kind of filled with this like, uh, uh, what sounds like saxophone type instruments and uh, deep bass, as uh, you're, you're sort of trying to find a path through this crowded, uh, to this room of crowded people. Um, I'm just looking around if there's anybody I recognize in okay. the room. Uh, roll a perception check. It's definitely hot and sweaty in here, but no one seems to care. Everyone seems to literally be like lost within this space. That's a natural 20. Oh, a natural Ooh. 20. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Yes, uh, easy enough. Um, you're looking around for someone you recognize and just because of the amount of faces, there doesn't seem to be anyone who resembles a face from back when you were at school slice port, if that's what you're looking for. But you do see what immediately attracts your eye. Just a bit further down into this chamber, uh, into this room near what looks to be almost <clears throat> like a bar. Um, it's this very, very beautiful woman. It seems that the second that you see her, your eyes make contact. And as you're walking to, uh, you're walking to forward, she begins to, uh, as you're walking forward, she begins to start walking towards you as you're sort of being bumped in that direction. As she seamlessly makes her way through almost like water through a path of rocks towards you. You get face to face with this dark skinned elf with uh, golden designs on their face mixed with the glowing paint that patterns their body. 
and uh, you both get bumped up right in front of each other. You're not from around here, are you? She starts to rub her hands around Maybe your I shoulders am. and then like uh, back beneath your neck and underneath your hair. A very, very close and a bit sensual, more than you were expecting. This is a place where you have to let go, darling. Free yourself from your own mind. Get lost with the rest of us. Getting lost isn't really on the agenda today, but maybe I could make some time. No, no, uh... Go ahead, actually, as you say that, and make a wisdom save. She starts to stare deep into your eyes. That's a 16. Everything around you begins to blur together, except for this woman's face. As if the entire background behind her is just radial blur. And now she's the only thing in focus. And her words sink deep into your mind as she says, Let go. Let go with the rest of us. Let go. Whatever you seek, I promise you'll find it if you just let go. Uh, whatever you say, pretty lady. <laughs> and your perception distorts more and more as even her own face begins to smear with the lights and colors of the area around you before. It goes completely dark. Somebody erasing the world? It goes completely dark. And you fall unconscious. It feels in a sense, and, and you would know this experience before, the, the mist around you has a familiar drug-like smell. And the sensation is almost like blacking out from an intense influx of intoxication uh, or intoxicating substance, mm -hmm. substances. Mm -hmm. And it feels like you're on the big chipper. Sailing by yourself. The waves around you. Gently swaying. And then it suddenly feels as if your boat has been hit by a large rock as you thud onto hardwood floor. And you come back into consciousness, unsure how many moments later, in a new interior. Do I, like, am I abruptly brought into consciousness? Or am I just, like, slowly kind of fading in? It, your eyes open abruptly, but everything is still blurry, and, and it sort of comes in and out as you're trying to gain your bearings and get a sense of your new surroundings, which is slightly quieter. You can still hear the bassy uh, uh, thuds of the music coming from what... Uh, actually, go ahead and roll Perception one more time. Oh, that one's a four. You're unsure at first if mm -hmm. the music is coming from below or above, or if it's mixing in with the much more calmer... Uh, uh, almost like road keyboard sounding uh, tunes that are coming from within this interior. And after a few more moments, it does clear up. And you look up to your left and you see you're in, much, in a circular room, uh, much more dimly lit by this kind of like purplish hue with booths on both the left and the right with like poles in the middle and, and, the, and these uh, uh, both male and female and in between dancers that are just provocatively providing services to these like special patrons who are getting you know drunk and and but but calmly they look they look important as you notice they're all kind of wearing the same sort of a uh, feather feathered clothing black feathered clothing like the assassin war that tried to uh, jump you and your friends prior your your eyes meet the middle which is this large centerpiece platform and a much larger couch. It's kind of like a red velvet couch with golden ornaments uh, or golden design. And sitting on it, sort of a, a hugged on by two uh, figures, is a much more recognizable, though slightly different figure. Your vision starts to come much more clear, and you can see them. They stand up and lean towards where you are, or sorry, they don't stand up, but they lean more towards where you are, you can just hear them say, Come on now, wakey wakey, I don't got all damn night. Uh, would I recognize this to be? Absolutely, the voice is in, in iris, is it iris? No, unmist unmistakable. The there voice is unmistakable. Your old leader, Reuben Price. And Looking, um, looking around at the room that he's kind of got around him, all these dancers, uh, the the feathered outfits. Uh, <clears throat> I'll look up to him. Uh, you always did have a flair for the dramatic, Ruben. <laughs> Give me that. 
Oh, you can tell I've upgraded much since we last spoke. I guess you kind of had to. And who you are actually looking at. His outfit is much, much different. He has a much different body type. I'm just going to describe what you're looking at. Um, like Reuben Price. Captain Reuben Price is, is a bit scrawnier than you are, but his muscle definition is like inhuman. He's only a little taller than you are, uh, but you know that he is a year older than you as you would. He's always been a year older than you. Mm -hmm. He has this jet black swept back sort of like swept back spiky hair with one that that uh that gets slowly swept back to the neck with one of these long braids that comes down two strings of hair that flow uh just over the forehead you also notice that he has new facial features as he has this long scar that goes from one cheek to the other over the bridge of the nose and uh another scar uh, a much uglier gash that is just a blotchy scar that covers one side of the face and keeps one of his eyes permanently closed. Mm -hmm. Is that new? Very, very new. Both scars are new. He's also wearing this black, this sort of like a long black leather jacket with uh, studs and, and, and designs on the shoulder pads and the same kind of like raven feather collar that acts, uh, that is like much larger, almost acts like a, uh, like the, like the beginning of a cloak, in a sense. Mm -hmm. um, he has chains wrapped around his arms and these black leather fingerless gloves. And the leather jacket itself is completely open, revealing these two tattoos that start uh, from somewhere uh, somewhere in his red leather pants and then climb all the way up his uh, the two sides of his torso and then up to his neck. And then you imagine it also, cli or, or it also climbs down his arms as well. Seemingly both like... Uh, this kind of uh, almost like Japanese dragon in our in our world like Japanese dragon design mm -hmm. and just layered over those tattoos on his body he has like multiple chains uh, very long chains same kind of chain that's wrapped around one of his forearms mm. and he has and, and really nice like like stupid dress shoes <laughs> like just stupid <laughs> pattern dress shoes <laughs> awesome am I tied up right now no actually but you no. are basically surrounded yes Okay. You're not tied up or anything. You are still kind of coming off of this foggy drug trip that kind of puts you into a slumber, but uh, you aren't tied up. Uh, you get the sense that there is no need to tie you up as you are uh, outnumbered. I like the place. Definitely an upgrade. All right, where'd you, uh, where'd you get that one? That one looks new. Oh, we're getting right into the personal history. <laughs> Why don't we catch up a little bit? Chip, my favorite kleptomaniac. It's been a Sorry. while, hasn't it? Not long enough. I'm interested to hear uh, what you've been up to. And he kind of like, uh, the same hand that's holding the cigarette, he reaches into his back pocket and then flicks this like paper airplane of a, uh, or this, this parchment paper that's been folded into an airplane at you. And as it hits you, it hits the ground. It, it is your wanted poster, essentially. Little of this, little of that. You know how it is. You run away from the gang and suddenly become some kind of big shot, making moves in the seas, causing ripples in the waves. By the looks of this, I'm not the one who thinks I'm a big shot. The dark port? Why don't you just say evil place? I... Come on, man. I didn't name this port. This port is actually what became after a... Certain ocean turned to black tar. You see, no one comes down here anymore since no one's allowed to exit into that ocean. I took that as an opportunity to set up new base after. Well, <laughs> you know what happened to the old one, don't you? Well, I'll cut right to the chase. I'm not here to be buddy buddy anymore, Chip. Oh, but I was hoping maybe we could go out and get a pizza or something. The time for any kind of forgiveness for your betrayal have long passed. Although I did consider it as I am a generous guy. Considering I took you under our wing and taught you everything you know. Kept you alive, scared babbling little boy. Ruben, you only protected yourself. You know that. And everyone just kind of like, like their eyes widen. As the dancers stop. And you just 
stands up and then flicks the cigarette onto the ground and steps on it, like, very aggressively, but trying to stay passive. It's Price! It's Captain Price now. Oh, sorry. And you will do Captain well Price. to learn the respect you never did. Before you open your stupid mouth again, I'm gonna cut to the chase now. You see, I knew the second you stepped in the Allport, and while I am kind of shocked and surprised that you even survived on your own, the second I knew I could use you. I need something retrieved by only a master thief as yourself can acquire. And if you don't do it, every one you love and care about will be dead before you ever step foot out of Allport. Okay, okay, okay. Captain Price, with sits down. <laughs> with all your vast resources, you you need my help. That's what this is about. I was sure you were just gonna kill me. Oh, I absolutely could just find someone else to do it. But you see, Chip, this one's personal. The person you have to steal with, I know you're friends with. And anything I can do to get even with what you did to me. And he just kind of like sweeps a little bit of hair back around where the scar is. Well, I could kill you, that would be no fun. Okay, what's the job? <laughs> that, that was easy. Care this I much about people, don't you? I didn't say I would do it. But anything to keep you away from me is probably worth it. Well, I'll consider leaving you alone if you actually manage to pull this off. There is an item in a particular magic shop, my People have witnessed you enter and exit. An old dog runs the shop and, uh, is keeping something. Keeping something away from common folk, not sold. And, uh, usually we just do a little bit of thievering ourselves to get things onto the black market, but this one I want for myself and I want to make sure it's done right. It's an eye. That's what they say it looks like. You know, one of these, he just kind of like opens up his eye like really wide and then lets it uh, snap back down. Yeah, I got the picture. Should be really easy for you. Okay. I want to stand up at this point if I was just kind of leaning down. Uh, is there anywhere around here that would have like a drink that I could grab? Water or anything like that? Maybe somebody holding a drink? <laughs> yeah, like I said, on the, in this sort of like circular-ish room. I mean, the, va the wall behind you is like a straight wall, so it's more like a half circle. But yeah, um, yeah on, the, on the left and the right of, of Captain Price's platform, there are people drinking. So I want to I wanna kind of just walk along the room. Uh, and as I'm walking, grab a drink out of just somebody's hand and continue speaking to him. <clears throat> Slide of hand, uh, 23. You are yeah. able to just swiftly grab a drink and start drinking it before anyone even has a chance to re react and when you do that you see a smirk just creep across captain price's <laughs> face so you want me to sneak in to rufus's shop he has a name by the way and steal an eye for you uh i guess i guess that one you have under there is not working so well <laughs> we, got, we got a funny guy <laughs> Yeah, I'm looking for a replacement. You don't need to know more about what it is or what it does. Just need you to get it from me. Oh. Whether you gotta lie to your old friend or take it right up from under his canine nose. Here's what I don't understand, and, and hang with me here. Rufus is an old friend, you know? He, he, he could get a deal for me if I wanted it, and I'm sure it wouldn't even cost so much. And with all your vast resources, I don't understand why you'd need me to steal it if you couldn't just buy it yourself unless you don't have it i really hate having to repeat myself i'll put it in terms your little bastard monkey brain can comprehend this item isn't being sold there is no oh. price and therefore you're gonna take it from me or i am gonna take from you Let's get one thing straight, Price. You're not taking anything from me. I think we both know that. Anything? What about that small child boy you walk the streets with? 
I recall him being there when, uh, one of, Crow, Crow, I sent Crow after you, just to send a message. I'm <laughs> actually quite surprised you had the balls to come meet me yourself. She said that cowering little boy was there helping you. This isn't a problem of theirs, okay? You keep them out of it. Well, let's not make it a problem of theirs. We were all there. And Ollie, which is his name, was there too. Who you keep around you and it's none of my concern, Chip. No, but it should be. Could you lay a finger on them, you won't have either eye. Chip, you don't get it. And he starts to walk down his platform and just get a little closer. I learned a lot from our experience together. And I learned that whenever there is someone as disloyal as you, an example has to be made so that the new people you keep around you don't make the same mistakes. And you can bet I've made plenty examples. I know you don't have any problem with it. You betrayed me <sighs> and yourself. I tire of rehashing old memories. What's it gonna be? I can have my people attack your ship before you even step out of this building. Or you can get on your little boat that you came in with and go do this easy job for me. Bring it back and have a good night's rest. Safe from any kind of me. Seeing as you already know me well enough, what stops me from coming back with my crew? I know where you are now. Chip, if you don't return with that eye by yourself in the next hour, I will make sure your little child friend and anyone else who dares to get in their way lies cold and lifeless. People are watching you, and I will know. You don't have many options here. Sure, you can come back after you've done the job for me, but I'd like to think that I'll be ready. Since you've so, uh, graciously gave him, given me your potential plan away. Oh, if you know me so well, you already know what I would do. Yeah, I'll get you your eye. He gets right up uh, to your face, and he's just like a little bit of an eye level above you, and he just looks down, and he puts his hand right where your stomach is. After this, all is forgiven, and maybe we can one day share that drink. For now, I guess I have a date with an eye, so thank you. Um, you shake his I don't hand. know, I didn't get your name. Uh, just looking around at everybody. <laughs> yeah, the one of the people on the left is this like, it's another dark skinned elf, but it's a more masculine guy. He's very big, very built, very sharp pointy mm -hmm. ears, he's bald head. And he's got like tattoos that are covering the head and go down the face. And he's also wearing one of these coats with like raven feathers on it, but it's not leather. It's not like a, a cloak, like uh, the one that the other one that you met. Uh, and he just looks massive big. He's got these dark sunglasses. Uh, and then the one on the right, or, or one of the notable figures on the right, is actually uh, another one of those drow elves that attacked you. Possibly the same one. But their foot is much over their cloak, and they just have their legs crossed. Arms crossed, uh, kind of just keeping a watchful eye. I'll be back, I guess. Uh, so stay big and scary while I'm gone, and um, try not to kill anybody Ruben <laughs> always love that sense of humor do you shake his hand no okay no way he wipes it on his uh his his torso all right and uh you go I guess right <clears throat> I just I want to see you around Cyclops Whoosh, like and I and I and I go oh because I shut the door <laughs> if no. there's a door if there's a door so, or I sneak around the corner and say that. It's more like an hour around the corner kind of like spiral staircase yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you head down and you actually make your way through the same kind of uh, a club-like interior. And at this point, because you've already failed the save, you have a, a bit more of an immunity to the gas or the mist that's kind of just surrounding the room. Everyone in here is like still succumbed to the drug, essentially. But you make your way through and uh, you don't actually see... I will say that you would have seen the dark-skinned elf that sort of kind of uh, seduced or attempted seduction on you in the upstairs room where you were taken. Um, and you head back out through the black market, which you would gather at this point. It's the black dock, the whole market 
is the black dog. Mm -hmm. And you make your way through that little uh, crevice that kind of has to like duck under a secret wall and then through a tunnel uh, or through an alleyway. And then you're back into uh, the normal streets of the dark port. You head back to your little boat, unless you say otherwise. Uh, I'd look around for any other possible ways to get here from the main area. Besides, area? uh, just any way, any entrance to the dark port that's not water. Based. Like I wouldn't have to take a ship. But I mean, just take a, just take a stroll around, see if I can find anything. Make an investigation. Actually, this is looking around, so perception. You sure it couldn't be investigation? I'm investigating the area, looking for another way. I'll let it be investigation. Yeah, big day. 18. So, like I said, these uh, these ports, these barnacles, these suburbs are fairly big, as it is, you know, like little mini cities around the big capital. But you would know that it would be a much longer walk than just taking a boat down one of the water lanes and then docking on the side of the barnacle and making your way inwards on the town. But if you had the means, you could s scale the wall that supports the Golden Center Market. That is the second level above all of the suburbs. Mm -hmm. um, but you wouldn't be able to use like a, you would have to scale it like some way, like either rope or climbing or whatever, uh, because okay. the there is no pulley system elevator or ladder that leads from the dark port to the Golden Circle Market because they don't want anyone coming up there from the dark port. So there is a way from the Golden Circle Market down to the, the Dark Port. Yeah, it's with just like, like a rope or something. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty long climb. That's all. It's doable. I mean, it's not too dangerous if you plan well. Uh, I'll I'll just I'll just take note of that and go. Yeah. With the yeah, the walking muddled. would be like a few hours of time to get from this part of the city to the top again, and then uh, just doing the boat. I'm gonna say it works like a car because of the water lanes like flowing in the direction you want to go, making the boat much faster i see it takes about 30 minutes to get from this part to uh underneath the hole again you um i will say because the riptide pirates currently aren't at their boat <laughs> mm -hmm. um or you don't you don't actually have to sail past your ship so you don't really get seen by anyone and um are right, where are you heading um, the dark point. probably back up to the boat right now just real quickly Okay, if you're going you're going back to your ship, then I definitely will say that they are still at bed, bolts, and beyond. Hey guys, a lot of things are my destiny, but you know what's not? Spending time in a line at a grocery store or hunched over a stove. But now I don't have to deal with the meal planning or the prepping, now that I have Factor. Factor makes cleanup easy 24-7 with fresh, never frozen, prepared meals that are so delicious, you wouldn't even believe they're good for you. I, I literally didn't, but they were tasty. Factor saves a ton of time by sending chef-crafted meals straight to your doorstep, eliminating the hassle of all that grocery shopping and meal prep. Not to mention, again, no cleanup. Every Factor meal arrives pre-prepared and ready to eat in just two minutes. It's gobbling time. They also take care of the tough stuff, like nutrients. Their registered dietitians and expert chefs work hand in hand to create meals with nutritious ingredients. And with more than 27 meal options each week, I'm never bored. Factor can match whatever you need. They've got vegan meals, veggie meals, cold pressed juices, smoothies, energy bites, plant-based bars, extra protein, veggie sides, and even more to keep you fueled and focused all day. So support the podcast and your meat and bones and head to go.factor75.com slash JRWY120 and use code JRWY120 to get $120 off. That's code JRWY120 at go.factor75.com slash JRWY120 for $120 off. Enjoy the rest of the episode, rollers. You, uh, you dock, get to the ship. Your friends aren't there. Hey guys, I'm uh, back. Guys? Except uh, obviously you hear. Captain Ship, is that you? Oh shit. Oh yeah, yeah it is. Uh, where's Captain they... Jay and Captain Gillian? Last I heard, they went on a search party for you. Have you been gone for quite, you've been gone for quite some time. It hasn't been. Old so man I'm Earl's still in his comatose state, not waking up from the events that had happened. Alright, uh, you know how long ago they left? It has been approximately one 
hour and 12 minutes since they left the ship and went on a search party for you. If they ask and they come back, let them know I'm alright, just taking care of some things. Will do, Captain. I will continue to watch the ship. And just like smack his metal body ding, like... Ding. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Um, and I, I want to head off to... Oh, shit. Okay. I'd like to go to the Divine Barkinist. <laughs> yep, you take the normal path. Um, sort of heading up from underneath the hole here. And emerging onto the second mm -hmm. level. The streets of the Circuit Market. And, uh, mm -hmm. you take the curved street all the way down to the Divine Barkinist. Everything is, it's very late right now. Middle of the night. Um... You don't pass your friends on the way. Okay. Um, you don't even know where... I mean, we and Meta know where they are, but, like, you, Chip, wouldn't even know where they are. Or yeah, where the no shop idea. they went to is, so... You don't pass them, and you just head back to the Divine Barkinus, and it is closed. It's dark. Dark interior, no lights. Okay. I'll slip in. All right. Uh, front door... Um, so what I want to do is, uh, disguise myself as Rufus and pretty much lockpick the front door. Brilliant. Go ahead and make a stealth check. Yeah, it's a, it's a 24 okay. on the stealth check. 24 is perfect. Now go ahead and roll, uh, we're going to do a lockpicking. So you make a dex check with your proficiency bonus. 21. Click, click. You hear the, uh, the mechanisms inside the door just open up and the, and the whole, uh, it quietly just, and you're able to make your way in. And you quietly okay. shut the door, and you assume you're being as stealthy as possible, and you look just like Rufus. You're inside the interior uh, of the Divine Barkinus. I want to look around for this eye. Um, you spend a while looking in the uh, sort of like glass display case that is on the right side of the uh, room, and all of the shelves and, and different baubles that are hanging uh, from like metal grates on the ceiling. Uh, you're kind of like walking through this almost like jungle of magic items. It's so beautiful. You love like it. I'm gonna say you love this place, but this place is wondrous, like I've described. Uh, there's tables in the middle of the room. It's almost kind of this like, uh, like two rectangles of the layout, but like placed on top of each other to make it. It's hard to describe, but you look around and uh, make investigation. That's a that's a ten. And nowhere, nowhere around here, um, there does there seem to be some kind of eye, but you do know that behind this sort of like hanged curtain. Uh, which I called a portier earlier, uh, which leads into like the back, almost the office space of the Divine Barkinist. Um, that's, the, that's the only place you haven't looked. But in the actual shop front area, the the, the floor, there is no eye or anything resembling an eye. I'll, I'll kind of like sneak behind the curtain. So you start to walk uh, into the back room of the Divine Barkinist where you have seen both Amber and Rufus kind of go back and forth when dealing with you as a customer mm -hmm. and... Uh, you walk down this narrow hallway. To the right, there's like a little bathroom that's in a in a room. Uh, uh, it's almost like an RV bathroom. It's so small, and um, and then it opens up into the square room. And just before you enter, you hear the sounds of. And as you look, you see in this wooden chair at this wooden desk that's mounted to the wall with this, uh, like these like beautiful, almost like firefly lights that are just kind of like floating around uh, the room above a sleeping. Rufus, who has his hands or forearms on the desk and his head just kind of like conked out and the tongue partially hanging out. And he's got these two small little uh, glasses that are hanging on the uh, uh, the bridge of his snout. And then you do see he is kind of cuddling this magic item that resembles the eye. Uh, drop the disguise self. Is there a way to cut on a light or something? Light a, light a torch? Uh, I, yeah, there's like these oil lamps where you can twist and yeah, I'll, I'll twist that and go up to him. Is he awake? Does he wake up to this light or is he just out? He's out, right? He looks like he's been like working overtime. I'm like, <laughs> I start like, oh, this. And I start poking him. Oh, this. He doesn't wake up. So I start scratching behind his ear. Yeah. Yeah. And at that point, his like leg starts to <laughs> <laughs> slam the floor a little bit. Dunk, 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 dunk. And he's oh, like, hey. oh. Oh. <laughs> hey, buddy. Oh. <sighs> Chip is. What are you doing here? Uh. In a little bit of a pickle. I was hoping you could, uh. Help me <sighs> out. 
Oh, don't do that. Okay. All right, I'll do oh. that. Oh. You know, oh. it's, it's not very nice to break into someone's room. Yeah, but I, I needed, I needed some help, and you're the only one who can help me. And then he, kind of, he like notices what he's working on, and then just kind of like pushes it a little bit behind him. And he like stands in front of it. What, what can I do for, for you, young chip? Uh, pretty sure it's got a lot to do with that, actually. Uh, I don't, I don't, don't know what you're talking about. The eye. The, the huh? The what? Captain Price. Who? Or Reuben. Ooh, 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 uh, oh, sorry. Reuben. Starts to like get a little closer and sniff. And then uh, as he uh, sniffs around where you, your, uh, your exterior, he comes back with this puzzled kind of concerned face. What you been doing around well, the black, the black dock, Chip? Is everything okay? Rufus, uh, after the Black Rose, I made some friends, just like we all did. Um, some of us made some nice friends, some of us some not-so-nice friends. I made some not-so-nice friends with a Captain Price, who you might know as a uh, scary guy down there in the Black Dock. He's, he's gunning for that eye, Rufus. He oh. wanted me to get it. Oh, no, 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 Chip. Oh, yeah, yeah, most, yeah. Most. Most people don't know. Rumors are spread around, around about this Captain Bryce, but we don't get involved with those who are in the dark, dark port. No, no, but no, sir, we Rufus, don't. he's involved with you. He sent me to take that from you. I guess the ruse is up, and he like just like pushes it from behind him. Uh, what would he want with this or a little doohickey? Um. He might be missing an eye, and I might have something to do with that. And you can see, like, on the desk, Rufus has this sprawled journal of notes and drawings, and... What, what is it? Why does he want this one so bad? Well, if he's from the Dark Port and the Black Dock Chip, he's probably a very sinister person, and this is a very sinister item, and... I'm afraid that it has a lot of dark power I can't seem to ascertain with my little snout. Though I've been studying and sniffing it out per request of Ember to try and uh, figure out its capabilities and what we should do with it. That's part of our job, you know, Chip. We get these dangerous and, and powerful magic yeah, items. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand, Rufus. I, I understand. I'm not going to take it from you, and I'm not going to give it to him. Don't worry. That is safer in your hands than it ever would be in his, but... He's coming after my crew. I have to do something, and, and I, I can't show up there empty-handed. I was hoping you could help me. Is there... Um, you know, I, I at least wanted to understand what it was, but if, if you don't know, you know you don't, you don't know. Um, well, its power seems to be quite dormant and not very active, though I sense bits of... I smell a sense of uh, necrotic... Uh, but well, it isn't very powerful at the moment. Well, Ruben's kind of a prick, and power is something he gets off on. So, if that thing's got power, he'll figure a way out to use it. I, I appreciate you telling me, but I shouldn't be involved. I almost wish you just took it from me. Though I understand. No, you don't. Not after what he'll do. Look... I understand you don't want to be involved in anything, and I, I'd hate to, you know, involve Amber in anything either, but we don't have many other options. I've got an idea, but it's it's kind of a long shot. I don't know what you're capable of, I don't know what Amber's capable of, but and I don't have much time. Is there any way to fashion something else that's not this? A fake? <laughs> They're rubbing his eyebrows. Or a way to take the power from this one? Roll a persuasion check. If he doesn't get what he wants, he's he'll come and take it no matter what. I Rufus, we have the upper hand right now. I don't now. want Andrew to be Amber to be in danger. We won't have that for long. But I did only roll a twelve. Well, Amber is the magical one. I just have the senses and the knowledge after traveling so long with the black rose. I just um 
Maybe there, there is a chance she could seal some of its power or cause it to... Cause it to curse the user, but that's a lot to ask out of dear Ember and I'd have to go retrieve her. It could work, I just... If, if he finds out what we've, what we do, he, he'll come Th Then I'll the handle it from there, okay? I can take him if I need to, and he's not gonna stop after sending me. Hmm, Chip, I, I believe in you, Chip. Whatever you'd like to do, I... I always put my crew first, so what is the plan? Ah, uh, well, we need Amber. He nods, and he sets the little sort of like box case that's uh, almost like a, a ring holder, but it's holding this small spherical eyeball down on the desk and then um, walks past you and puts his hand on your shoulder and says, you know, you're starting to remind me a lot of Mr. James. Though I think he would have tried to take them all himself. <laughs> oh, he would have. He would have got his ass handed to him. He would have looked really cool while he did it. Maybe I would look cool if I did that. I'll return here shortly. And he, uh, softly walks. Rufus! Mm hmm Thank you. Don't thank me. Did he leave the, the eye? I want to look at it. I just want to want to pick it up and take a peek. Okay. Yeah, it's like this uh, purplish. Uh, it's like a, it's a, it's like a almost like a glass eyeball mm. for people who don't have an eye, a replacement eye, except it has just purplish hue to it. But it's foggy. So I I can't get anything off of it. Any way I could. Depends on what you're trying to discern. Uh, I wanna I wanna know like what it can do if possible. Go ahead and and make roll an Arcana check. Never good at these. Seven. Yeah. Well, you, you're not a magic person, per mm -hmm. se, so your knowledge about the lore of magic items and whatnot is, is very, very small. I mean, it's really <clears throat> just anything that you might have heard growing up. But What about the writings in the book that he was writing down? I think it's a different thing you're looking at. Go ahead and roll another investment. Fourteen. So Rufus seems to do a lot of, like, messy notes kind of like scattered uh, ideas and theories and if something one of his uh, mm -hmm. uh ideas is is wrong or if he gets a certain sniff wrong it's uh, it's scratched out but what he has right now on the few pages that you kind of uh flip through this eye has like he said a necrotic arcane presence and it, it mm -hmm. seems to be Mm -hmm. almost useless at the moment the similar smell as he writes to uh, other cursed or evil or objects that hold evil secrets if you will he's still keeping an eye no pun intended on it and trying to d discern how you can either activate it because it hasn't been able to be activated one of the theories is by having like a like a, another eye with it in order to mm. activate it like the okay. like there's like there's a pair and this is just one of the pair. But at the moment it's just it doesn't do much other than exude that kind of arcane presence, and that's about it. Uh they both walk in and walk through the hallway one after another, and you're just kind of sitting there twiddling your thumbs yeah. or or whatever, playing marbles with the eyeball. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just kind of playing around. As they come in, I'll stand up quickly. Hey, uh it's so, I'm so sorry. Hey. Yeah, it's late. To wake me up for something like this. I if you're going to put us all in danger, at least play, pay us first. Jeez. Uh, well, uh, hopefully I'll pay you in not letting this place get ruined. And as she walks in, actually following her is Little Apple. The bluebird apple. who flies onto your shoulders and just kind of sits. Oh. Hey. Uh, did you figure anything out about Apple? Uh, we'll get to that in a, in a little... Oh, Let sure, me, sure, what sure. do you want to do with this? Uh, so I don't know how much Rufus explained to you, but we've got a bit of an issue. Well, gee, I got quite the earful. She thought I was retired, and, and then I told her about the evil man, and she's... Let's just get the problem fixed, and then <sighs> we can all go to bed happy. Yeah, we can we can have it be over with. Uh, but you're one of the best. I figured you... If anybody knew what to do, it would be you. Help me stop him. Oh, dear boy, you don't need to worry about our safety. I have covered that plenty of times in the past. This is not the first time that someone's wanting to rob the Divine Bach and it's... Okay, then. 
I'm not just a creator of magic items, I'm also a mage. I can take care of ourselves. Though we are getting older. It is you I am worried about. Maybe you don't do yourself a favor and just do me one. Got a lot of guys down there. A lot of them a lot bigger than me. I am not that big. Amber, I'm really small compared to that guy. He was so big and he was bald and tattoos all over the head. That's gotta hurt, Amber. Think of the pain tolerance you have to have for tattoos on the top of your head. Hush your mouth, boy, as I think a little. I got it on my neck and it really hurts. It's not the size that matters anyways. You'll do well to remember that. We don't know enough about what this eye is. And I wish we had more time to study it before we attempted any sort of magics on it. But in this pressing time, desperate measures during desperate needs. I can put an enchantment on it that, hopefully, if he ever uses it, causes um, severe backlash. I'm not really looking to kill a man. No, no, just keep him from using it, that's all. No matter what this um, power is that lies within this small eye-like orb, I think... If I can enchant it so that, when used, it causes the user to essentially fall into permanent paralysis. If he, if the eye gets removed, will he be able to move again? Think of it like driving a stake into a vampire's heart. I'm not sure how much lore you've read on the different beings of our world. Uh, yeah, to totally. I've read those. I'm gonna roll history check. <laughs> roll history. Twelve. Many documented monsters, bro, and you've seen, you've seen some when you were nine years old on the on the Riptide Pirates. Like there are tons and tons of beasts and different monster-like humanoids, mm -hmm. and that includes um, vampires. That also includes vampire pirates, though you've never met any. Yeah, I understand the concept, but it's not it's not gonna kill him, is it? He will be able to see and hear, but he won't be able to move or talk. He won't be able to use his magic or his weapons. But he'll still have a life of some kind. No. He won't be able to do anything with it. As soon as he uses it, the magic will wear off eventually. It'll just take some time. So so after a while, he'll be okay. Okay. That's... Yeah. Let's do that. Well, let's hope that the enchantment works, because I assume this is a rush order. You're going to be paying later. Uh, <laughs> as soon as possible. I'm sure Jay's got me. You kind of watch as uh, she sits down in this little wooden chair and uh, you and and, Bo and Rufus both kind of look over her shoulders as she begins to crack her, her knuckles and <laughs> her, her, her fox-like ears just kind of like move in and out as, uh, as uh, she begins to work and uh, this beautiful arcane green magic just starts to flow within the air and the fireflies that were illuminating the room also grow brighter. And more of them kind of grow around all of you as he draws these runes in the air and then uh, implants it onto the desk that create this uh, almost like alchemy circle around the orb. And um, she casts this uh, as like a rust ritual. Um, and I have to roll to see if it works, though that information will not be disclosed to you. Oh, damn. <laughs> Another half an hour or so. Maybe exactly an hour passes, and uh, she finishes up uh, her forehead. Seems to be, uh, or, or I guess the fur is, is slightly damp, but she's sweating from exuding so much a power. And it finishes, and she says, Okay. Okay, dear boy. I wish you the best of luck. I must return to sleep. Uh, yeah, yes. Uh, the incantation has taken hold. I give her a big hug. Thank you so much. Uh, My crew thanks you. Probably. I don't know. They have no idea what's going on, actually. Maybe I should tell them that. Not later. Thank you! <laughs> Just, um, we'll put it on your tab. If that is ever such a thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll be back by. Not uh, to worry, I'm sure they'll, they'll, uh, they'll be back and they're, they're very reliable people i can i can sniff reliable people from a mile away you have no get some let's let's go her back i'll walk you home i'll walk you home dear you guys walk safe i'm glad that you haven't grown into 
A guy like that. Oh. Me too. That warms my heart to see that you did a good job raising yourself. I wish we could have kept doing it for you. Oh, things happen. But hey, no time like the present. I could always become evil now. <laughs> <laughs> Just look at him for a second. It's like dead silence. I'm joking, silence. Rufus. Rufus, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> Not going to become evil. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you again. Uh, still away, go. <laughs> I leave. Yeah. Which way are you heading back to the dark point? I'd want to use rope to uh, maybe tie around something sturdy. Roll stealth again. And then... I we survive one. 24 on stealth, by the way. Excellent. You are with the knight. <laughs> one with the shadows. <laughs> you don't catch anyone notice you. And Tip you... Is the Batman. Yeah, no, this is... You, very, you feel very much in your element doing what you are doing, being alone and stealthing. Um, it feels natural. Go ahead and roll Slide of Fantasy, how well you're not the rope. 13. Okay, and then for this, I mean, uh, you have a climbing speed, so you'll just be mm. climbing down with no check. Okay. We'll go like that. It's not a hard climb, you're just descending a rope. Yeah, I'll, I'll climb pretty slowly, mm -hmm. carefully. Um, how long is your rope? I'm pretty sure 50 feet. 50 feet. This person's problem. Because yeah. eventually you do run out of rope. <laughs> is there is there like a building I could I could get to from there? Um, sure. Yeah, just like leap over to a building. Uh and All right, take defer that make acrobatics, yeah. Fourteen. So fourteen the acrobatics is not to not take damage because this is gonna be a far drop. It's just to reduce the damage. Instead of taking fourteen damage, you'll take seven damage. Now I assume you are making your way through the town of the dark port mm -hmm. and um returning to where the block the black dock is eventually you do find it do i pass the the, the old man again you do and they they reach out <laughs> to grab you once again just kind of look over at him and second time's the charm right uh, has your price been paid uh we're getting there <laughs> Here I am. Uh, he just kind of like sinks back into that that corner that he's sitting on, um, and you walk down the same mm -hmm. path and into the same chamber as him. You make your way right back in front of Captain Reuben Price, who is, you know, on one side is beautiful tiefling, and um, the other a draw. I, I want to. This room is now is... heavily filled with like cigarette smoke and stuff, tobacco smell. <laughs> as I'm walking in, all right, I did, <coughs> I did it. Damn, Reuben. Oh, Robin Hood is returned. <laughs> uh, not for long. A few hours. Is that some kind of new record? Or? Well, I work quick. <laughs> That's why you wanted me, right? Curious. Did you have any trouble running into your old friends? I took care of them. And I want to hold it in my hand. Um, is, are there still uh, just as many people around? It's just the... Um, there is like two menacing figures on each side, and then like mm -hmm. uh, what looks to be like VIP patrons that fill up the rest of the couch. So only three, three or four like goons, we'll put it that way. You know, Ruben, you could have been so much better. <laughs> you could have been so much more than this. You know, there was, there was a time when I looked up to you. And you're saying this while, like, walking up the platform and now uh, looking down on mm -hmm. him. And I say, now you're just so small. He takes this long drag. Just kind of brushes off what you're saying to him. <sighs> if I valued your opinion, I would have asked for it. And he took, takes the little orb and holds it up with his one eye. I know the only opinion you ever valued was your own. Why didn't you, uh... Step back for me a little bit there, buddy. Probably just stay right where I am. Okay. And then he, like, opens that eye. That eye socket that's been, like, carved shut. And you can see now, like, oh! that scar seems to be from a, um, a combination of a burn mark and, like, some heavy bludgeoning. 
Um, and it is disgusting. As he opens it up, I mean, it is like this red cavity. Um, <laughs> and it's sort of, he's sort of like basically cry, bleeds crying a little bit. And you watch him as he's like tilting his head back and those, those two, um, uh, uh, I would say the two figures next to him are, aren't even like budgeting, budging. And he just starts to insert that eye into his, his own eyeball. And he presses it in. And as he does, he blinks a few times, he opens his eye and this kind of like, uh, uh, what was a, like a cloudy with a little bit of purple hue then takes this form right in front of you as you're looking of this natural purple with a reptil reptilian slit of an eye and it glows just a bit and he smiles this mo like the most sinister smile that creeps across his face and he looks at you and he says <laughs> brilliant just wonderful who knew the one who would take my sight from me would be the one to bring it back? Eye for an eye, right? You can almost see, like, these small little purple and green veins that go into the eye at that point, and he says, Yeah. It's almost like he took a hit of cocaine as he's just like, really, really... Bro took a bump, bro. It's <laughs> going crazy right now. He's, like, really uh, uh, taking in this almost, like, influx of energy, and he just sort of stands up, and you uh, have to, like, meet his eyesight as he does, and uh, uh, as you guys are, he's just a little bit above your eye level, and he's really close. What do you think? How do I look? Still really gross, actually. <laughs> I'm gonna give it a little test, huh? And then he quickly looks over to his left and he watches this purple eye glows and then within an instant, this beam of black and purple energy fires out from it and strikes one of the people sitting on the couch who are drinking from their drink and enjoying the dancing. And as that happens, this loud blast just... And you look and your head snaps over to watch and you see this patron who wasn't a part of his own crew, but just someone who, it, it, like one of the VIP patrons, disintegrates into dust. And at that very moment, as that happens, there's shock amongst everyone's face. And he begins to cackle. <laughs> oh, this is great! <laughs> and then his whole body locks up as you see his veins pulsate out of his neck. And his, uh, his almost cheeks almost like puff out or, and turn uh, this bright purplish red. And then he sort of stands there, unable to move. But then the eye, the one eye like looks down towards you. And you can just see like this crazed almost anger. And as he locks up, the people, uh, the two goons or the three goons that are, that are on the couches stand up uh, in this sort of like panic. Uh, oh shit, something's happened to the captain, and they're about to start and rush and towards uh, towards you and, and attack. An attack? Yes, they look I, like I they quickly get up and just kind of <sighs> like, they see that their their captain locks up, and then he begins to like fall backwards in this straight, almost stiff of a board. And all the veins wanna... are like popping out of his neck and on his arms, and he looks like he's just been completely locked up from the inside. Whoa, whoa, I just gave him what he asked for. Are you not gonna help him? They are they they immediately like one of them rushes over to try and catch him from falling and they're like Captain Captain uh, and he's just not moving. He's just like like his teeth are gritted. He can't move any muscles in his body He just looks and all you can see is his eyes moving all his all his all that happens is his eyes move And they're just deadlocked staring at you as you're trying to back away and then <sighs> go ahead and roll a dexterity saving throw Okay, oh, I was just cocked 12 <laughs> This, the large, uh, uh, dark-skinned, uh, man rolls a natural 20 to fucking hit you. Dude, what the fuck? Um, at this point, you're gonna take the damage, but I won't roll initiative unless you say you're running or staying, okay? I'm, uh, I'll stay. Take 24 uh, and... points of bludgeoning damage. Can I, can I lie? You know, you know, sometimes when people lie? Yeah, you're good. What are you? <laughs> What's good? You know, and so 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 I just did one of those. I just lied. I'm gonna leave. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So as soon as you get the, this uh, this burling, terrifying man comes up and just strikes you with almost these kind of like studded gloves, and it fucking almost caves in the, your chest cavity as you get sent flying back towards that flat wall, and you still see the the glaring eyes, the one purple one, and the one almost kind of like silverish grayish eye 
uh, of Ruben mm -hmm. Price as he's staring directly at you, and it just looks angry, but he's completely paralyzed, can't say, can't move anything, and you dart around that corner and down the steps, and you're, you're making a break for it. I I would actually like to... Are they chasing me? Do I, do I notice? If you, I mean, if you're running for a little while, um, just make acrobatics again. Getting away, that's a 17. Because of your nimbleness, you're able to... You're able to dart away and out of this building if you want without anyone following. Yeah. I mean, I they, wanna... they took... They, they Like, he goes for a strike, but as soon as you dip, like, you gather that these... Uh, these goons, pretty much their attention goes right to there. Their mans who's been downed. <laughs> and you're able to, to get away if you want. Yeah, I wanna... I kind of wanted to dart away from this specific area and disguise myself as a random person from the crowd I would have seen. Um, and I really just want to know what's going on in that room afterwards. Maybe get an idea. So you want to try and disguise self and then go back up to where the where Ruben is? Pretty much. For this, you know what? I'll say just roll one last stealth check. Oh, a natural, natural one. one. <laughs> I walk back in. <laughs> Basically. Uh, and I'm like looking at, at the at Ruben, just trying to see what's going on. Very, like, nervously walking casually. <laughs> you try to disguise yourself, and as soon as you walk in, the person who you disguise yourself as looks up and sees you as they're kind of, like, crowded around um, Ruben, and then they point and shout, uh, and the same big man gets his attention. They point and shout what? Imposter! Imposter! Shit! And I run. <laughs> <laughs> and pretty much at that point, as you walked back in, it looked like they were uh, um, crowded around uh, Mr. Price, Captain Price, as he's just like laid on that couch. The two uh, uh, companions next to him were just like looking around fearfully, and uh, the dancers had all run away, and the other patrons, because they didn't want to get disintegrated, like the VIP patrons, they also ran. They kind of bummed at you as you like walked back in, and you run away. I'll say with your same check, you're able to to escape. Um, looking behind you, you're you don't think you were followed, and you make okay. your way. Uh, where do you go after you run out of the building and out of the black market? Uh, I want to lose any kind of tails on me and uh, see if there's a ferry that can take me back. Uh, okay. And uh, yeah, easy enough to fer for a ferry out of the dark port. It's just uh, four silver pieces. Okay, that's fine. By some some guy who's trying to make his way uh from the port across and uh either removing the cloak you stole <laughs> or uh mm -hmm. keeping Probably it just up leaving it in the water mm -hmm. you ride this uh boat as a as like a little taxi cab back to the hole a center of all port doing done something <laughs> to hopefully reunite with your friends. And that's where we're in the session. Yes. Yes, That dude. was cool. That was fun. It was cool and it was fun. I agree. But we won't talk about it on Just Rolled With It. We're nope. not doing that for this. Nope. nope. I don't even know if we should tell the other guys what's happened. No. I mean, I I would maybe as Chip. Yeah, I think you can do that. Yeah, we'll, we'll leave that for an in-character. If you say everything as Chip, then we can talk about this in the next Just Rolled. But if you, mm -hmm. anything you leave out, we just won't talk about it. I hope you guys enjoyed this special Chip episode. You know, if the other party members do something stupid like God on their own, maybe they'll get their own. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was kind of smart this time. Yeah, no, like I mean, it was cool. Bit. It was cool. It was really, it was cool. really cool. I mean, if you Thanks hadn't had out. Amber wake up in the middle of the night and try and like put enchantment on this eye, Ooh. Ooh. There's like no other way I could have taken this guy. I don't think you really made amends this way. I will say that. No, fuck that guy. <laughs> For sure. Fuck that guy. No, all good, all good. It was really interesting. Ruben. Super cool. Imagine being named Ruben. I know, right? You come I, out the womb, your mama named you Ruben. Bro, I almost named him Robin. Damn. Robin would have been cooler than like like no, it fit him so perfectly. That motherfucker is a Ruben. I know, like, he's he's so close to having the perfect thieves name, Robin Price. Robin Price. 
<laughs> it was I so close. It. I switched it to but Ruben because I was like, that sounds more like a dickhead name than Robin. Oh, he's, he's such a prick. I don't like him yeah, in yeah. the best way possible. I'm glad, All bro. Right. Thanks All for right, I hope you guys enjoyed. Episode. Make sure to go to Patreon. Bye. Go there. <laughs> Give okay. us money. Goodbye. <laughs> See ya. Whoa, ho, ho. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. My favorite part was when Chip did, um, you know. This podcast would not be possible without our patrons, and thank you especially to the High Rollers, the Big Motherfucking Cheese, Alyssa, Artemis Loves You, Ben Manny, Bowling Ball Iron, Buttery Toast, Cade Six Deserved Better, Cheshire, Cornier Comet, Crobins, Definitely Not a Turtle, mm, nice try, Dream Strider, Everett Stoker, Ex Poogaloo, Finn Rua, Gillian's Biggest Fan, Grillion Fried Strider, Jay Newell, JRWI Enjoyer, Jumpiest Venus 34, Juzambo, Kev Senpai, Lord Ticklefish, Mitchell Iverson, Mithril Gear 417, Mr. Nacho, Netvin, Nonex Lodal, Race Ristau, Resha Snivy, Rakate, Rikor Sin, Riker Kurodu, Salutatien, Sandy 007, Scarab 5, Spinyax, The Letter 7, Wait, that's not Raytheon, Zerberus, Your Gal Pal Valerie V, and Your Personal Jester. Thank you guys all so much. Head over to the Patreon if you want to become a high roller yourself or just support the show at all. And I'm terrified to discover the repercussions of what Chip did this session because I have no idea. Thanks for listening.